Yeah. So what I'm going to do today is um, see if we can clean up or clear up a lot of those issues around the uh, the Turkish ghetto. Um, and, and by clearing them up, you know, a, a lot of the, you know, quite commonly the answer is going to be, well, yeah, both is, is fine. Because something with, with all sorts of movement drills is that there's, there's no, there's nothing where the drill's right over and your body's wrong. You know, the drill is there to serve you, not you serve the drill. So if, if the certain aspects of the drill just don't jive with you at this particular moment, which can be because you haven't got either sufficient mobility or sufficient movement skill or both, well, it doesn't make it a bad exercise, but it means it's not the one for you at, at the moment. Um, and like like that ex exercise, like Tom's question there about the uh, the Turkish ghetto, there's there's no one's right or one's wrong or one's better. As a, as a blanket rule, certainly I'd suggest anyway, it's right, which one which one works for you? Um, because you, what you'll possibly have noticed, um, certainly with, with Brett's demonstrations, and what a number of the people in the group often do when they're doing the Turkish get-up, is they have, have their arm. I'll just get myself on the camera here. is they have their arm pointing up all of the time. Now, that actually comes from the fact that the Turkish get-up is, is most often done carrying a weight. Now, if you're not carrying the weight, it, it's perfectly fine to perform the movement in or to use the arm in a non-vertical way if it facilitates or gives assistance to the movement. Um. Now, obviously, you can't have the arm down or you need the arm straight up if you are carrying a weight. But if you're not, it's fine. You know, it, it's, you know, drills are there for movement maintenance, first of all. And for it to be effective movement maintenance, it needs to be moving things in an authentic way. And they're also there for us to develop authentic movement skill. Now, if it ticks those boxes, it doesn't matter if it if it matches someone else's description or someone else's rule. It, it's 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 be, it's functional for for us and or for you, and that that's that's the way you should look at it. And what that then doesn't mean is you just throw away everyone else's rule book. You know, it's more understand what those rules or directions are supposed to supposed to offer, and why. Now. Sometimes that ain't necessarily clear. And so you can use, you know, whatever anatomy or physiology knowledge that you've got, whatever sports science that you've got. But I'll tell you what, before you move, before you use any of that, use your common sense. Does it jive with your common sense? You know, and I would always say never accept anything from anyone, especially, you know, certainly without question unless it jibes with your common sense, especially if it's coming from me. <laughs> you know, if it doesn't match your common sense, do not accept it. Possibly because the situation dictates you might have to go along with it at that particular point. But but don't accept it and don't lock it in there. Don't, never lock anything in if you, you can't work out the why for yourself, you know? So without further ado, uh, if there are no specific questions, and obviously you just fire them as and when they uh, come along, uh, just as a bit of a warm up, we'll go through the the warm ups, the um, the rolling suite, and then we'll uh, we'll get into some figure of eights, and I'm sure we'll have some questions around that. Oh. 
Brilliant, that's Santiago. Can often be good to start with the legs first because I find that they are it's a less complex overall movement. And if that sort of greases the wheels for the arms to come thereafter, and so much the better. Keep keep that shoulder that yeah, well, right, right, Mary, Mary. You're being contrary. <laughs> Right, so here's a, um, here's a good little var variation on the drill for you. If we're going to do the legs, as you know, we need to take the shoulders out a bit. Um, and so a good way of doing that, if you lie down on your back now, just as if you're going to do a leg roll, right? So we're, we're going to use your right leg. But if you take your right arm, put it out and just, wait, just pause a sec. Right arm out at 90 degrees, palm down. Now what you, just the right arm, left arm goes up overhead. As if you're on the cover to help. If anyone knows the Beatles albums. Right, so what we've done there is that the left arm is staying the same as it was. So you've got a nice long axis on the left. But putting the right arm out like that, that anchors the shoulder to the floor. So it actually is a, is a bit of an impediment. But given we want to take the shoulder out of this movement, it's it's a good way for your neurology to sort of accept, no, we've got to do this with the legs and the hip. So right leg, uh, 90 degrees. That's it. You can relax the knee a bit and just take that all of the way over. Keep the knee bent. To find the floor with the foot. Right? Now... You're doing things when you're not told again. <laughs> it's all right. We, we go, we're going to get this with this here, um, Mary. And if you just sort of wait for the instructions. So set up in the same way. That's right. So right knee. So hip flexed at 90. Knee stays bent. And so go over and just find the floor with that right foot. Keep the knee bent, but find the floor. Right. So big breath in. And then on your out breath, I want you to keep the toe engaged with the floor, but reach for four o'clock on the clock face. And reach and push out. Right, so you, you you didn't do anything with your leg then, did you? You just brought your arm over. I know. <laughs> so so that that's what that, that's what we want to avoid because there's there's no there's no benefit as such, certainly within the drill, of of just finishing on your front. the The only benefit is is using the the correct pattern, and then once you've got that pattern, if you ever do need to go on your front, well, then it can be useful. So if we get to the point just where you're touching with the foot, and now we want you to sort of explore, keeping that arm down. No, the arms come up. Keep the arm down. So. Get to the point where the foot touches the floor. And now, we, we don't want you to go all of the way over. I just want you to reach out with that foot, keeping it on the floor to the point where your leg is straight and pointing somewhere between four and five o'clock. Right, now, if, if you can pull that knee up a little bit, because it, it's, too, it's too near five o'clock, and then now, just straighten that right arm up overhead so it's not, so the palm's not on the floor. So reach overhead with the right arm. Don't finish the move, just so it's not at 90 degrees. Yes, that's it. So now, pull, lift that right knee up towards the hips a little. That's it. And then reach out with that foot towards four o'clock. And just reach out, and if you don't turn over, and you've got to try push through the heel. Keep pushing out. Reach out with that leg and push. <laughs> That's okay. And so, if you bring your knee up to ninety degrees, then so it's at ninety degrees, and then allow allow yourself to come out. No knee at ninety degrees. At the hips. That's it. 
and then allow yourself to, to come over, allow the arm to lift, but only to the point where the knee touches the floor. Now, but keep, keep, keep the arm overhead, but you can turn at the shoulders until the knee touches the floor. That's it. Just now pause. Right. right. So if I'll I'll show you what we want to what we want to try to do, Mary, because it's it's you know, and I, I know how difficult it is just for me chatting. So uh, you're doing great, by the way. <laughs> Right. So what we want, so I'm going to put the camera here around about ah, four o'clock. So what we want to see is if this comes over now, you can see, in fact, it might be a little bit better if I swing around here. So I'll keep that arm down so it's the same as you were. You see how my hips lifted up? I'm, I'm not taking the leg across. That hip is coming up. And because this knee is across the midline, gravity is pulling on this knee. And it wants to pull it over like that. So knee comes up, take it over. That point there, I put that over there and just lead with the knee, straighten the leg. And then that's when I push. And you can see how that's not, that's not going with the arm at all. So if I come around this side now, knee comes over. Right, now we're touching. And it's like push down and away. Like that. Um, I suppose one of the ways in which I think is probably going to be best for you to start getting the spine to dissociate is, is if you use the sphinx position first. So you put the arm through and then just bring the legs over. And once once you get, even that arm comes over, the shoulder comes down, makes it easier. Once you get really comfortable with that, that's gonna allow the spine to dissociate. And then once the spine gets dissociating like that, we can then take it out of the assisted start position. Because your options for assistance uh, when you're going from your back is to get yourself sort of propped up by I've got a half bone roller here. So what I could do is lie on that. So I'm already tilted in that direction. You can see how much, how far easier it is for me to get that initial roll. And then from there, the arms stay overhead. I push, keep pushing and reaching out. You're, you should never have any movement from the shoulders without that leg moving out. So if, if, we, just, if we just try a couple from that sphinx position, and then uh, what we'll do is we'll prop you up with some pillows. <clears throat> All right, so reach through with one arm, and then it's the opposite leg. Now, now, do, do you see how you haven't led with the leg at all? If you go back to the start position then, Mary. And thread, thread the arm. That's it. And then now that left leg, if you bend it to 90 degrees at the knee, and that 
That's it. That's it. Now straight. Have you seen that last bit there? You didn't straighten the leg. You just turned at the shoulders. And what we need to do is, is get that in your mind that it can never, ever be a good thing for you to try to finish this drill with, with your shoulders. There's no benefit to it. Now, pause, pause. A little bit better, because one of the things is, is if you get yourself so far across, gravity is going to get hold of you anyway. But you, you're absolutely getting there with this. And so what I'd like you to do, thread with the arm, do the same with the leg, but then pause. And I want you to pause with your shoulders still in the air. I want you to get that foot touching. Lift, lift the knee, lift the knee. Oh, sorry, your, your video dropped out there. <laughs> sorry, mate. Let's, let's, we'll, we'll go through this one again. Let's go in, into the Sphinx. I'm sorry for pushing it through, but it, it's important that, you know, important get it. Oh, to get it. Right. It's definitely, definitely waiting in, waiting to get into your program. You, you've got this, no question. Mm -hmm. So thread the arm. All right, now pause. Now, what I want you to do, oh, and, and don't do it until I say go, what I want you to do is I'm going to want you to bend at the knee and I want you to lift that knee off the floor and then rotate. And then when that foot gets on the floor, I want you to pause. I don't want those... Pause, pause. Now, I want you to straighten that left leg out, get the heel into the floor and push and push and push. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. You see, you, you don't need well done, the shoulders to engage at all. At the moment, there's, there's something in your pattern that says, oh, I'm struggling. My shoulders need to help out. But, but you don't. Your your hips are easily more than capable. And because it's such a foundational pattern, if you're getting compensation that early in the game, that, that's what's going to be causing a lot of your, your movement issues. Because... The ability of the spine to dissociate is so important for walking. You know, it, it, it's absolutely crucial. So let's just see if we can do it going the other way, and then we'll uh, we will push on. Oh, yeah, that's it. So remember that pause. So lift now, lift the knee. You don't turn the torso. That's it. Touch and pause. 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 Better. Hello. What what you need to do is say is pause and stop so you know the shoulders are out the game and then just focus on that leg. But that that that, that was certainly good enough, that one that you did then, you know? And one, once you get that sorted, it will pretty soon cross over into all of the other ones. As long as you don't give yourself permission to just try to finish the role. It's far better that you say, I can't do this at the moment than it is to finish the role with a compensation. Because if you finish the role with a compensation, you reinforce that that negative pattern. No. So that's great stuff, Mary. ITO, we're gonna move on to figure of eights. Um now where I would most like to see the figure of eight from would be from the kneeling position. Um, if the tall kneeling position is an issue, the next regression is sitting back on your heels. And if that is an issue, your next regression from that is, is just sitting on the floor. So what I would prefer yeah, in your tall kneeling position, this is going to be best is if you've got the knees under the hips. However, if you need to get slightly wider, so be it. And then we're going to do both arms, but then we're just going to do the horizontal figure of eight. Now, the two things we want to ensure, or what, what well, we want to ensure that we go across the midline. 
because we spoke we spoke on well I think a number of us have spoke on that the importance of crossing the midline and then also we want to try to eliminate any <laughs> any sort of waving of the body uh, that, that would compromise compromise how you cross the midline for starters uh, but we we want to be able to, one of the important challenges in this is being able to maintain stability in one part of the body to to you be used as a as a base plate or a stability post for movement elsewhere now if that means that we then have to reduce the size of the figure of eight then reduce it and for some people doing a really tiny one and doing it smooth is possibly going to be harder than the bigger one but remember let's have it all about that midline crucial thing about the midline is the the two hemispheres of the brain have to communicate with each other when you cross the midline it's almost like a neurological miracle the um the conversation that that can take place and take place rapidly enough and accurately enough that we can do that figure of eight. Um, I, I think I remember some chat about how it um, fires up the, the cerebellum. Well, the cerebellum still got to talk side to side. Um, but also I, I remember it being said how the cerebellum is responsible for balance. It It's always very tempting to um to talk about individual responsibilities for, for things in the body um I'm sorry. it's it's the sort of reductionist uh, way that most things are taught in the in the western world as in to break it down into individual parts and assign roles for those parts now it, it, it's often helpful and it's easier to conceptualize things, but it, it can also send you off down a rabbit hole. Uh, that there's a, many, many things that are responsible for, for balance. And one of the most fundamental things is, is your posture and your structure. So before anything thinks about trying to control, um, control your movement in order to obtain balance. The first thing is going to be, have you got structural support? Are you inherently stable? If you're inherently stable, you, you are balanced, and the cerebellum has done very little. So balance is more like an outcome, and an outcome as a, as a result of a whole number of different parts performing their role. And that that, that is, is the... Um, is I believe the right way to look at balance, you know, and and, and also in doing that, you, you can identify far more ways that you can have a positive impact on it. Because if, if you just write it off and say, "Oh, it's all down to the cerebellum," well, what, what are you going to do about that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's let's have a look at these figure of eights. That's looking good, Tom. Well, it's not as smooth as the other side. Yeah. The other side is. No, that's nice, mate. Yeah. Yeah, but it's a, as expected. This side is more loose. And th this <laughs> this will also uh, double as um, as visual training. If you can point with well with your forefinger with Peter Pointer, and then focus on the tip of your finger, it also synchronizes uh, or improves the ability of the eyes to synchronize. Me and Chelsea used to do this, and I think Amber as well, quite commonly. And it, it had, um, would you agree, Chelsea, quite a, a positive impact? That's nice, Timo. I'll think about doing that with a closed fist, but for your pointing finger. Like this? Yeah, and focus on the end of that finger. That's nice, mate. 
Hi, thank you. And try the other arm, and then try. Let's go for the uh, the tall kneeling position. That's pushing this, Steve. Yeah, well, but don't, no, no, try the other arm sitting back first. Yeah, this is rough. Or I'll tell you what, Timo, how about lying on your back, pointing at the ceiling? Yeah, that could work. Can you do that without using the other arm? Are you serious? It's yeah, uh, deadly it's serious. serious. No. You would. No. Hey. Yeah, it's very rough. Yeah, that's 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 a good place to start. As they try to keep that fist closed and just that pointing finger out. Or you can potentially use the pistol analogy and use it as a pistol. Okay. That's it. And actively visualize that you're tracking something that you're going to drop. Now, Santiago, that's an excellent variation doing it in the uh, in the squat. But because you can so easily access that position, I would suggest it might be um, more productive for you to do that from Paul Nealon. Well, I did it before I'm telling me. I was just yeah. taking a oh, break. Yeah, a bit of variety. Oh, fair one then, mate. <laughs> That, that's mm -hmm. and then what you can then possibly do then mate if you're looking for variety and kind a of challenge you go into forward half kneeling nice but also start right so that's comfortable but we'll start bringing that right foot towards the midline oh. Find find the point of challenge, but successful. And then do your figure of eights with, with both arms from there. And then obviously you can do the two arms at once variation also. That's it. So remember, but challenge, but successful is important. So find the, find the nice mummy bear position for that, that front foot. That's it. That'll be one for you as well, I think, Tom. So what position do you find productive, Gary? Is it sitting back on your heels? Is it? So potentially you can try like team or Gary, if you can um, you go into a crawl there and then go down onto your front and then roll onto your back and then see what it's like doing the figure of eight, pointing up there, see if that's more stable and whether you can get a more consistent. That looks like that might be slightly better for you. Because there's a, a number of things which is, are going to be going into the melting pot on this one. I mean, the first question is, is have you got the neurological control of your, well, eye-hand coordination to draw the figure of eight? And then the, the question is, okay, but can you provide a stable base for that? And if, if, if you can't draw your figure of eight, the, the question is, where where is the the point of challenge? Is it just your eye hand coordination to do a figure of eight, or is it because of a challenge of the a stability challenge of the position you're in? And so, as we've done with Timor and Gary, you take it down to the 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 minimal stability challenge. You can focus on just your eye hand coordination there, 
And then once that gets to an acceptable level there, well, then you can go to either sitting down or sitting on your heels. That's a good one for you, Jules. What you need to, what's a, a common challenge for you in the forward half, kneeling or, or in a number of positions? That's right, it's that knee caving in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it'd be a, a, a good little drill for you to be able to focus on that and get that right. And then once you you feel you're getting competence there and or with doing two arms at once, mm. you can then start doing as I was doing with Santiago and narrowing your base, which makes the, the posture more inherently un unstable because it's got less width. That's nice, mate. Crispin should be all over this. It's very Tai Chi. Yeah, we've been talking about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, so anyone, any questions on the, um, the figure of eight? Um, one thing you, you, can, uh, you can try to do, that's, that's a very nice figure of eight there, Linda. We're going to use you as an, as an example. You, oh. you see, that's quite the, the amplification, both on width and on height. So it, it it's nicely balanced. What you will find is if if you've got a challenge in one of your figure of eights, is that you'll probably make it longer. You'll you'll sacrifice a bit of height for a bit of width. And so just try to take note of that and then try to focus on um on whatever component you you're struggling in. That's really good, Linda. I'm just Mm. That's a lot of you. And it, it what well, could be helpful as well for for you, Lynn, especially because that was so uh, so good, is focusing on, focusing on the finger. Because I think were you focusing on a point on the wall, are you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so if you can try and focus on the uh, on the finger. And then that was more of a it. challenge for me to focus on that finger because it takes the visual cue of a of a stationary wall and furniture away, yeah. and you have to rely more on the stability of the the legs and the proprioception. So, yeah, um, it and that that that's that's one of the that's one of the sort of wonders of it, like of why there's just so much to, yeah. to what you know on, on first perceptions might be seen as a as a as a pretty routine drill. The, the stacks that will go into it. Uh, Kelsey, I don't know if you heard me talking about it previously. We used to um, do a figure of eight drill for the vi visual skills, wasn't it? And I think did we do it with the vertical finger, wasn't it? What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah. yeah, what degree? Do you remember we used to do the, the visual drills? And that was oh, yeah. the, uh, a figure of eight. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's. Well, that is... <laughs> you you're, you're sort of keeping it in um, in in sync. You know, a conversation with Chelsea is challenged but successful. No, the only challenge at the moment was striving for success. <laughs> So <laughs> I'm good now. I'm good now. I got um I got my sister sniffled. Right. So, so my visual but, drills. Yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. And um, they were quite productive, weren't they? Oh yeah, the circle, the the how can I forget? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, we did those for a while. 
It was oh, it was with a vertical finger, wasn't it? it? Wasn't with a pointing finger. Are you sure? Yeah, I, I, um, I think so. Because hmm. the what what I'll what I'll do is I'll try and find a. In fact, I'll just find it and put it in the um, in the chat straight away. I'll do it now. There is a. Um, <laughs> yeah, I said it was. I was like trying to do it, and I was like, wait, what is it? But no, I remember for. And that's the spine. It was in the circle, and I don't know if it was the tone that was in the picture, but that gave me neuropathy. Like, I was out. But, which, as, as we say, it, it's so often that is the um... neuroplasticity. Well, it it yeah, it's the in, it's the indicate it's the indicator that neuroplasticity is taking place because yeah. I mean, the, the brain is a is a voracious consumer of energy, mm. um, and so it, if it's gonna if it's gonna perform neuroplasticity, it, it, that that's a that's a heavily intensive pro process. It, it, it's oh, a, like an intelligent learning process. And but, nobody can be like, you're having neuroplasticity right now. It's like, you know, you just, it's weird. Cause they didn't show up on the MRI. You just like, man, I'm a neuroplastic. I'm creating neuroplasticity, which is a good thing. But it's, it's you felt like you just fell asleep. And you're like, but, what is this? Yeah. And, but it creates neuropositivity and all the good things come out of being tired. Well, sleep, sleep's the magic source for it, like isn't it? Well, I've I've just put in the uh, in the chat. There's the YouTube link in there. It, it's to a TED talk by a posturologist. And um, until I'd seen that, I'd never heard of a posturologist. Um, uh, is there? And is there ra anything? it's round about eight minutes in, where she will do effectively a figure of eight drill um it's worth watching the whole thing but if you want to just jump forward to that then then that's fine uh, and mm -hmm. you'll see how the the influence your your eyes have mm -hmm. and the synchronization of your eyes on your mm -hmm. actual posture because you're the vestibular system will always try to line you up so that your eyes uh, are equal and horizontal and in line with the horizon. And it will sacrifice almost every joint in the body to get you so. And so that will then be an indicator of how important your posture is just to facilitate um, authentic vision. Oh, yeah, I know that. I think we all do. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, anyway, on to, unless there's any questions, um, mm -hmm. on to the Turkish getup. Now, obviously, that's been focused on quite a lot recently. And the thing I was mentioning before, which I think will make a big difference to a, a number of people. As as Brett was saying, the, the aspects of the Turkish getup that we focused on are in fact the the most difficult of the of all of the move. Of all of the moves. And we have that. This is how you'll most often see the Turkish getup perform is with this arm outstretched as if you're going to be carrying a kettlebell. Well, if you haven't got a kettlebell, then the mechanics can and, and should change. Because if you've got the kettlebell and you're up, you can use the kettlebell. Certainly the heavier it gets, you can use the kettlebell to almost pull you up by depending on where you move it in relation to your center of gravity then gravity will get hold of it. And if it's heavy enough, it will move you. So if I'm wanting to roll over onto this elbow and I've got the kettlebell up here, well, if I move the kettlebell over to this side, gravity will start taking it. 
And that will give me space just to move into. Now, if you haven't got a kettlebell and you haven't necessarily built up competence in that pattern to move on to the elbow, it can be difficult to get, get around there. This foot down here is a big aid because that can drive you over. But again, that's still a skill. But what, what can help is this arm. If it's not carrying a kettlebell, it can help in taking you around here and coming around. It's a little bit like if someone goes into a squat, if, if they're actually not carrying weight, it's perfectly acceptable for them to be squatting with their heels up. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, often it's more intuitive. Certainly if you've got a little bit of restriction in the range of movement or you can't do an Afghan squat, then, then squatting like that, you know, because you've got your feet still underneath you. So there's, there's nothing inauthentic about that. It's only if you carry a weight, be it in a, um, a goblet squat, or if you doing a front squat and the weight is on a bar across your chest, that you've got to have those heels down. So it's a little bit what I was telling you about the, the exercise has to serve you rather than you serving the exercise. And so what I'd like to, to see from everyone now in the Turkish get up, and you can use whichever arm position you feel is, is most consistent with yourself. But I want to see good setup with the legs. I want you to be driving into the floor with this right heel. But I want to see the arm come over, whether it's down there or whether it's over here. This arm come over <coughs> and go hand to hand. First thing you do, big breath in. Move on to the hand. Or wrong, sorry, move on to the shoulder and you go hand to hand. Make sure you can feel this foot on the floor. You don't want, you don't want this. That foot needs to be able to drive down into the floor. Then big breath in. Onto the elbow. Now that can be because you've gone out here onto the elbow. Or it can be because you go like that. But I want to see the hand on the hand and the hand stay on the floor. And then from this point, you're going to point to the other toe and come up. Gary, let's have a have a look at you first, mate. Remember to use your use your breathing and check your setup first of all. Both legs at forty five degrees. Integrate your breathing. That looked good. That mate onto the shoulder. Now pause. Really good. Now keep practicing that, Gary. And what I want you to do is get long in that right leg. See how that popped up? Now, the way you'll stop that right leg popping up is in two, in two ways. Get rolling sufficiently. You don't want to be facing the front like a sit-up. You want to be rolling over. But also, if you just get long in the leg, a little bit like when you're on the uh, leg led roll and you're pushing out with it, get long in that leg and go from a full abdomen on an out breath. I'll breathe in. Excellent. The leg didn't come up. Now you you can get you could get better ownership of that movement, so it's less hurried. But and also when you go back down, mate. <laughs> nice, Did Gary. Try try to pause at each stop. So onto the shoulder. Big breath into the abdomen. Pause. Big breath in. On the out breath, go on to the elbow. Nice. Big breath in. 
on up to the hand. And so you can reach towards that left foot. That's it. Perfect, Gary. That's excellent. Was it was it the Super Bowl at the weekend, mate? Yeah. How did your blokes go? They won. How did they? Yeah. How was that? <laughs> yeah, we don't have any 49ers in the group, do we? No. Maybe <laughs> strong. Yeah. All righty, Jules. You're next up, mate. So legs are 45. That's nice. Think about the direction of that foot. That needs to be in parallel with the leg. That's it. Think about the breathing. Break it down into parts. Nice. That's excellent, mate. You can try that on the other side. You look like you're all over that, mate. I'm going to move on just for time. Okay. Oh, yeah. You got the leg under the under the sofa there, have you? Nice, mate. You you can benefit a little by staying a little bit more rotated, but now now did you did you have the the foot wedged under the sofa? Yeah, I still I don't know how much it's uh kind of helping because I, I sort of push against the sofa a little bit. I'm not sure. Well, if you do push against the sofa, that will be helping because that's you don't be... want to do that, right? It's not about yeah. that. Like that's the same as the leg popping up. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, because when the leg tries to pop up, it's because you, the um, your hips are trying to work like a V, trying to close the hinge. So if you've got it wedged, mm. then that part of the hinge won't close, but the top half will come up. Mm. And and you'll you'll get you'll get a um a false positive. Exactly. Yeah. So let's have let's have a look with it out, mate. And we'll so you want to do it we'll... lightly, if anything, isn't it? Rather than wedged underneath, you know what I mean? Yeah, well you I, 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 let's do it let's do yeah. it clear. That's it. Now, integrate your breathing, pause there. Now you can just visualize the next step first. What you're gonna do is that hand's gonna draw along the floor. So it's going to be a big breath in, and on the out breath, you're going to push into the floor with that left heel, and then just come round up onto your elbow, but pause at the elbow. See, you're trying to come up. You see, you're trying to go up. Don't come up. Go round. If you watch, just watch me a second, Jules. What, what you're trying to do is you're coming here. And then you're trying to come up, and it's it's that movement. But instead, come round. Yeah. So, big breath in. Onto the hand. Big breath in. The hand staying on the floor. And then you know. Let's try it once more on there. I think keeping that hand on the floor is you know should be a key one for you because you can't keep the hand on the floor and do a sit up. So push out, keep pushing out into the roll. Better, better. It's better, yeah. You know, and I think you've got the awareness there to start building that. And that's the yeah. key thing is, is don't give yourself a tick in the box if that foot's popping up. No, get awareness of what you've done better, yeah. but then you've absolutely got the awareness. You've still got to improve. Whereas yeah. if you wedge the foot, you know, um, you, you're getting silent failure, really. And that, that's... Yeah. You never want silent failure. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't know where, 
what you've got to improve. But if you have Linda, Thank you. so Linda, start on 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 your good side rather than your better side. Um, yeah. <laughs> good else better. Mm. Sehr gut. Spiegel glatt. <laughs> yeah, really, really nice, Linda. Really mm -hmm. nice. Let's go from Spiegel glatt to Spiegel glatt with Santiago. I have no idea what Spanish for mirror smooth is. <laughs> doble pulgadas is the extent of my Espanol. Mm -hmm. Nice, mate. Nice. You can you see that that roll where you're coming round. You know, it's almost like you, you go, instead of doing a sit-up, you could do like a helter-skelter up to the the uh, the top position, you know? It's like instead of taking the road straight up to the top of the hill, you just wind around the hill, you know? Mm. That's excellent, mate. Great demonstration. Timor. And if anyone's still got any any questions, and you, even if you think that the same question's been asked a million times, just ask ask it again, guys. Especially if you think you're getting something different from me, Dominica, Brett, and Crispin. That's nice, mate. Try although try not to straighten out that that right leg. Yeah, I did realize you cut away. Yeah. So do your counter roll to get back down. There's that right leg again. Is your breathing? You got that, mate. Drive that healing. Drive the healing. Because if you keep that heel out, that will drive you into the roll. Try the different arm position. Yeah, a little bit higher. Seems like it helps. Really nice, mate. Use your breathing. It's excellent, Timo. Yeah, it shouldn't be that difficult, right? Well, you, you so, sort of yes and no, but one once you once you've got the movement, it you know pretty much as Linda had. You you see, it's just a. Lovely flow and movement. You you sort of you know you think how can there be any resistance to that? How can it be difficult? Well, right. try to teach someone to do a Turkish get up, and you you sort of see how like you know, um, yeah. but but it you know it, it comes and it's um, you, you know it's progressive. So that, that that I was fine with all of that, Timo, and and one side will inform the other. So get really picky on on the side where you're most um, competent and start yeah, that leg straightening out. It comes pretty good on the left. Yeah, so try to get that left, but without focus on the leg. That That's the important part, because then that will start informing you about how you can drive that foot into the floor and how that can exert... Uh, positive influence on you know through the spine. Okay. But uh, Mary, I saw you in the gallery doing this. Well, I nah, don't. Mm. <laughs> it's just have. That's nice. 
you I think you can eliminate that that left leg popping up a little. See see your mm. wrong your right leg popping up. See that left foot there. See how it's pointing at six o'clock instead of four and five o'clock. Because now that angle that will that's what will give you the rotation to go round the hill instead of having to come straight up it. And it's when you try to come straight up that that leg will pop up. That's it. Well done. Oops. Nice. But if, you see if you can try to keep that, you know, the, the hand, the reaching hand. See if you can take it along the floor so you can draw an arc on the floor. I'll, if you want me to just remind you, I can, I can do that for you. Or... That was excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, so that really, really good, Mary. You just, you know, just again, don't give yourself permission to to just end up in the right position. You know, like a lot, a lot of these um, drills is a transition from A to B. Now, what what can often happen is people will give themselves permission to do it in whatever way they they want, as long as they end up in B. Well, it, you know, with these things, it's it's almost never about B at all. It's about how you get there. Now, that, that was excellent, that last one. And I think possibly that cue of taking the hand along the floor is uh, is an important one for you. Does that all, all make sense for you, Mary? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Uh, we started with Gary. Tom, you're next up, mate. Uh, that looked certainly. I'm obviously going with a high standard here, like it had a little bit of a stutter in it, yeah. as if you went to go about it and hit a block. That was nicer. Yeah, so, try, to, try to think about keeping my hand close to the ground and not. Yeah, I mean, because that, that looked like you did a, a little bit of a hybrid of the arm positions there. Yeah, it looked like. You you did the forty five degree one, but I think when Brett does the forty five degree one, he starts with the keeps the hand down throughout. Doesn't do the elbow flip. Actually, has his thumb up. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. I can see you engaging with the foot there, Tom. Yeah. Yeah, nice, mate. Rob. Nice, mate. Let's see on the other side. That was good, though. Nice and controlled going down as well. Make sure you get the 45 degree both sides. Nice, Rob. I think a real, real important one when you're trying to really polish up your Turkish get up is to be able to pause at each of the transition points. You pause on your shoulder, yeah. cycle of breath, pause on your elbow, cycle of breath, pause on the hand, and then obviously at the next step, which will be drawing the um, the knee under, so on and so forth. Amber. <laughs> Now, where where you can that's it. That, that, that was Dad, nice. I took me a minute. Yeah. I had to get that. Because what what I happened had... on, 
on the... There we go. What happened on your first attempt is that down foot, you moved its position a number of times. And I think after that first attempt, it sort of got into your head where the right position was. And then on the next ones, you didn't move it at all. And that, that's like yeah. another thing which people can, um, can, can focus on is about learning on each position. If you have to do an adaption to get a smooth transition, We'll try to work out what that adaption was and why it was necessary. Oh. You want to try on the other side? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. All right. That's not bad at all, am I? That's really but, nice controlled descent. Is it okay if I'm reaching over here for my arm down Yeah, here? yeah, Ab absolutely, absolutely. Okay, okay. Yeah. What I need. That was nice and smooth, Amber, well done. Oh, thank you. Hi, Chelsea, mm -hmm. you're on mute. Mm -hmm. All right. It's not all bad, I suppose. Of mm -hmm. course, I'm on mute. <laughs> right, now, slow it down and pause at each posture. All right, and breathe. Yes. That was magic, Chelsea. <laughs> First roll onto the shoulder looked like you used momentum a little bit, but the rest of it was mm. outstanding. All right, in my defense, other side. No momentum, I get it. Did, did you say no more momentum before that? Mm. And then do a Usain Bolt TGU? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say Bolt. Go on to the shoulder and pull. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> on to the shoulder, pause, cycle of breath. Now on to the elbow. Nice. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well done, Chelsea. Reese, are you with us, mate? I'm dead. Oh, yeah. Let's get oh. you on. Turkish, get up, mate. I've read. Don't breathe. Mm. <laughs> that, that, that was a nice Turkish get up just to fix the camera, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so pause on the shoulder. That's it. Nice and slow. Excellent. Draw the arc on the ground onto the elbow. Nice. And then mm -hmm. up onto the hand. So reach to what. So what you can do on that one there, mate, is with the left hand, re point and reach towards the left foot. And then that'll take you up onto that right hand. That's it. But you, you you don't need the... Once you're on the elbow, the left hand doesn't touch the floor anymore. Yeah. So just try try that again. Well, you can do it on the other side, actually, mate. I mean, it looks like you've got the, uh, the movement. Now, think about that right leg. Let's have it, the legs and feet in the right position. They've got to be out at 45 degrees, mate, both of them. Right, let's have the right leg, so it's pointing at four or five o'clock rather than six. And what, what clock have you got, mate? 
<laughs> so yeah, I'll. Uh, I just get a bit confused with the yeah. when you talk about the uh, the clocks. Yeah. Oh, Maybe it's just the military side of me, like. So mm. if you if you take it that if you lie down straight, the or, or do you only have digital clocks? <laughs> My show the age. Yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> Right, so instead of clocks, 45 degrees. So take both legs out at angles, 45 degrees. That's it, and have the point. There you go. I'm speaking to youth now. <laughs> and then, so now just go go through your Turkish get-up. So that, that right hand onto the left, so you're on your shoulder. It's nice control movement, mate. Then keep, keep it on the floor, onto the elbow, and then hand, hand up in the air and sort of reaching over and past that, that right knee. Reach. Don't touch the floor. That's it. That's excellent, mate. Uh, if you can get comfortable in that movement on both sides, and then we'll, we'll start <laughs> going in, into, the, uh, into the next phases. Yeah. Really good, that, mate. I, I don't... I, I don't make a habit of saying this to most blokes, like, but your eyes are looking good. <laughs> you know? That, yeah. That, that was the surgery mm -hmm. success, was it, mate? Mostly it was. Yeah? Well, that's good news, mate. I say, everything looks in sync there, you know? Mm. All righty. Now, Indian clubs. Has everybody got them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Has everybody got him? Guess who hasn't? Give me a second. <laughs> Elsie, take yeah. over. Here we go. Hi, you're windy. Oh, there you go. Sorry, guys. I was uh, out for a run rather than at the gym today. So clubs were in a different place. And that's a great point to add. I did my best run for seven years today. And yeah. my, one of my big um, rehab targets is being able to run and run for consistent extended periods. And it's only this year which I've been able to achieve that. Like, and so I managed to do three miles today. Brilliant. Well done. Yeah. I know. What was it? Brett was showing us uh, round here, and then when the arm hits here, that's when the elbow kicks in. The upper arm stays straight there, so it doesn't go past the side. So, to be honest, I'd be best starting from out there down. And that, that's the first thing to get, is just that. And so if all of you can start with that one, obviously if you want to sit on your heels, it makes it a little bit more difficult. It can still be done. Oh, look. Nice, Rob. Yeah. I think you, it might help it, actually, Rob, if you hold it near the end. I think you've got enough space to, to do so. Is it twisted behind? There you go.
I know this this one might be relevant for other people as well. So Rob, what you want to do? So you can start out there like that. Mm -hmm. Round. Now you've got that fine. And then you well, actually, just go there, rotate it out. Go and bring it, bring it back. Just just rotate it. Keep the elbow, the elbow down. Just mm -hmm. rotate it behind your head. And look, you don't need to get it the whole thing flowing just yet. You just want to make sure you've got each step goes to the next one. And for others who are slightly more advanced, it's the elbow comes up and round. But don't don't think about going to that until you've got to here. There, uh, rotate out. Mm -hmm. That's it, just twist it behind your head. No. So pause there. That, that. Yeah, like that, mate. That's fine. Come around and there, twist it. That's it. Excellent. Well done. So bring that up, bring the elbow down to your body, Reese, when you come round now. So so st start with the start out in the crucifix position. That's it. But point the club upwards. That's it. Now bring the just bring the arm down to your side. So like your hands to your pocket, all the way down to your side, elbow to the side. That's it. And then now is when you bend and rotate at the elbow and bring it up and across. But you, you, not bad, mate, not bad. And if you're watching here, I will show you, and I'm sure you'll get it from this. So we're out at the side, all the way down to here, and then club turns in, and you bring it across your body. So from there, down, club comes in, and there. Rotate it round. The important bit is from there to there, and the elbow takes over and comes up and across the body, it stays at the side. That's it. So all the way down till the elbow comes to the body. That's it. Now bring it across yourself. Across, across, across. That's it. Yes. There you go, and then twist. Yes, perfect, mate. Mm. Excellent. Yeah, nailed it, mate. Well done. Great stuff. All right, Santiago, let's have a look at you, mate. Spot on. Is that a uh, is that a heavier club, mate? Uh, well, I think the ones I bought were slightly heavier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know at the time. That's it. Now on this, that's it. on this one. Just concentrate a little bit more on that technique, especially that phase there. That's it. So the club's going behind your head. Yes. Because that's about your scapular placement. Your scapula didn't want to come back in. 
Excellent. Really good, mate. Uh, so do you see see that one then? But you want to turn and go out there. That that's so if I um just try to demonstrate for you what you were doing. You come around here and then you're coming out there. Like that. Whereas what you want is from there and then it stays on that axis there. Uh, money. Let's see you, Timo. Mm -hmm. It's been going pretty well. Uh, what, until the camera come on? Yeah. <laughs> so look up at the head. Look ahead, mate. Push those hips forwards. Shoulders back. Focus on your breath. Yeah. Hips forward, mate. The moment those shoulders get ahead of the hips, those hips need to take control back. And breathe into those ab breathe into your abdomen, mate. Shoulders back. Or rather, chest up and out. Chest up and out. Put your best taxi driver voice on. You talking to me? Mm. Chest up and out. Arm to your side. Uh. Tell you what, Timo, you can turn so that your right arm is stabilizing on the bed. Okay, you can make good type again. Yeah. Shoulders back, chest high. So first the arm comes down to the side. Bring it across your front, rotate in, rotate, that's it. And then turn it behind your head. And excellent, bang on, mate. Make sure you integrate your breathing into this. Timo, that's brilliant, mate. Spot on, mate. Absolutely spot on. Great stuff, Timo. Awesome. Yeah. I think Mary likes the idea of holding on to that bed. Yeah. Getting it all together here. This is excellent. Mm. And just pause at this point here, Mary. So now you don't have to lift your el elbow. Just turn the club behind your head. So okay. just rotate out. That's, that's it. Like that. And then... I think that's going to be right. Obviously, the uh, the camera that you get away with it if if there is anything in there. But that looks great, Mary. And try to move a little bit closer to the bed, so you you're taking more of your own weight. And so you just you, you're not holding on to take any weight. It's just almost as information for your balance. That's better. And you can loosen the grip as much as you can on that, uh, as much as you need to on that left hand. That's it. And then rotate and back out. Excellent. That's great, Mary. Mm. Magic. Well done, Mary. Keep that up. Hey. And try it on the other side. Hi, right, Jules. Let's see you, mate. Excellent, turn it in. Yes, that looks great, mate. Excellent, Jules. What you like with the other hand, mate? Yeah. 
Oh, nice. That's great, mate. Well done. And then you can start looking to put the pair of them together. Linda. It's a reverse windmill, isn't it? That, that's nice, that. Mega smooth. Not on this side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, look, look at the camera. <laughs> nice. Yes. That shoulder's coming back to health. I'm going to say that still looks very smooth to me. Really? <laughs> yeah. The Samth. Oh. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, has, has Chelsea left us? Tom. Mm. No problem, Reese. See you soon, mate. That was some good movement tonight. That's it. S slow it down so it, the movement's complete. You'd, you'd, when you were speeding up there, it sort of led to you taking shortcuts. And so on this, bring it. Yeah. So, Tom, I'll, I'll just um, put myself on. Make sure that you come round to that position and I have, have the club there. You sort of tend to uh, come here and then short circuit it to there. So you want to come round, pause, in, round, pause, in. Yeah, so you, you want the club to be pointing to your right-hand wall when, when when you bring it into what they call the racked position. that That's it. See how you keep the elbow in, but the club points out. Yeah. So, cheers, Rob. See you, mate. Cheers. Well, keep, keep that elbow tight to your side when it's pointing out. So I will show you it again. So it comes from here, out, round. See how that elbow, that just stays there, round to the side. And that club is pointing at sort of parallel to the torso. And then from there, it just rotates in. That's when the elbow comes out. And then round. Yeah, that's it, mate. But don't... That, that, yeah, and it's just a rotation. That's it. Don't try to uh, to do that quickly. Just make sure you're, 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 uh, the, the movement is as is ex expansive as possible. And then string it together and then look, look for the speed. That's it. No, you you're lifting the elbow there. Just ro just just rotate the club behind your head, so it's behind your neck. No, so fit. So come come down to the six o'clock position, right? And so that elbow stays clamped to your side. Now the club comes across you. The arm and club comes across, and that that goes to there. Yes, 
And so try to keep the elbow low, but really all you're doing is keep the club at the same height and just turn it behind your head, behind your neck. Don't just turn the, the That's it. Now the elbow will come out. At, and so keep rotating out. Open the chest. That, yes, there. And then now you just straighten the arm. And then the straight arm comes down, comes across the body into the racked position, twist it behind your neck. And the arm comes up. That's it. Yep. And then you just straighten the arm and it comes round. And so you see how that sort of flows into each other. Remember to point to the wall. It's got to point to the, the racked position. Yeah. That that that's a, a thing is the one for you, Tommy. As long as you yeah. keep awareness of that racked position of the elbow by your side and the yeah, the club points to the wall. So it's the racked position, and then you put the bait, put the meat of the club behind the, the nape of the neck. That's it, yeah. Just like that. Yeah. And and then the arms point. Now the arms point to the wall, elbows point to the wall on your right. Elbow points to the right hand wall. Because now all you do is straighten the arm. There you go. And you see how it feeds into each other. So round and racked. So go to the racked position and stop at the racked position. That's it. Now it should be pointing to the wall, mate. Pointing to the right hand wall. That's it. That's the racked position. So I will uh, pop myself back on. This needs to be the take-home position for you. Um, back. Back. Yeah. So the elbows by the side, clubs pointing out to the wall. And then you just turn the club. So the meat of the club is behind the nape of the neck. So then the next movement just straightens the arm. It's putting all of these simple movements together. But well, each movement's got to fill, got to go to its full extent, so that it's in position for the next simple movement. If it doesn't do the full extent, the next movement can't be simple. It's got to, yeah, do a shortcut. So straight arm comes down and round, across the body, into the racked position. Then it just turns behind the head. Arm straightens. Let's see if you got that, mate. So when you go into the racked position, keep that elbow tight to the body. And so the club wants to be horizontal with the parallel with the floor, pointing at the wall, but the elbow tucked in tight. So your the the back of your fist needs to be facing forward. So el eliminate. You, you can effectively just eliminate everything else about the movement. And just know where the racked position is. Know that that is the racked position. Almost like you, if you're if you're going to do a curl in the gym, that that is the racked position. So the, the back of the fist facing forward, elbow in tight. Now, if I open my hand and put the club in it. There it is. You see how it's horizontal, parallel to the floor. So then I just twist it. Goes out straight, comes round. Racked position. As long as you know where the racked position is, it doesn't matter. You don't have to think about what I need to do to get there. Just think, where's the rack position? And you'll get there. It's that simple movement again. I mean, you can just try doing that, mate. Oh. So you get that familiarity. And then...
Because it, like if, if you um, pretend that the club is, is a dumbbell and just do a curl, Right, yeah, so th there's your racked position, yeah. mate. That's yeah. the racked position. And so that's the position you need to finish in when you brought it across your body. And so if you twist that now so that the club goes behind the nape of the neck, yeah, straighten the arm and swing. Comes round to the side, now into the rack. Yes, nailed it, mate. Twist it behind your head. Arm comes straight and round. Yes. That's it. That's brilliant, mate. Nailed it. Brilliant. Now it's, it's, and, and now it's really simple. But it's only really simple because each bit is, is doing its full movement. Yeah, I sure yeah. have things. Yeah. Uh, excellent, that, mate. Uh, Amber. Ooh. You're going to close us out here, Amber. I got it. Um, well, well, well. Wow, oh, Amber, that's brilliant. <laughs> Fist it behind. Out and round. Amber, that's brilliant. I have not done it. It's excellent, Amber. And I've got to show everyone else this. Uh -oh. So what was all that bollocks about lying on the bed before, mate? You knew it! I missed it. Oh. Yes, Timo, you're killing it now. I love it. That's <laughs> Mate, that was yeah. outstanding. Yeah, right. Thank you. Well Even with the pressure of the camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, any, anyone, any questions about about anything? And obviously, you know, there's always the forum there if you if you have. But you know, I mean, one of the biggest things is if you you feel any of of me, Crispin, Dominica, Brett, if anyone's talking across purposes, get 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 it out there straight away. There's, there's no egos at this end. And there's certainly no rule that any of us can't be wrong. <laughs> you know, but a lot of the time is there's all different ways to skin a cat. Uh, and it, it all boils down to it, it is the body being used authentically. And the body is built to have options. You know, so but the uh, everything tonight was great. That the, the Turkish get up across the board was was excellent, and as long as you're gliding smoothly and not having to use momentum, then the positions of arms and, and legs, it, it you know, it um, it don't let perfect be the enemy of the good for starters. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, all right then, everyone. Another excellent session. Delighted with that. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Cheers, everyone. I will see you, see you on Wednesday. Thank you. Oh. Uh, well done, Mary. Thank you, Thank Steve. You. Yeah, so Mary, make sure you do your homework on that rolling. <laughs> okay. Because you've definitely got it, and it, and you know, don't feel the pressure that you've got to end. You've got to get from A to B. Just mm. the focus needs to be on how you're getting there. And right. if at any point you're thinking, I, I can't progress any further, well, that, that that's fine because you've identified the point where you can't continue authentically. Now, if you stop there, you'll remember where that point is and we'll be able to sort the problem out. But if you just sort of carry on through, say, oh, I've got to get to B, then 
it you know it hides the problem in the fog and ultimately the problem is is uh, stopping our progress you know because you you've, you've definitely got the movement skill there man yeah. there's no question about that you know all right Just... then. and keep getting those personal sessions off chelsea didn't she take you to the gym didn't she she did yeah so you, use your assets where you can <laughs> All right, see, I'll see you all Wednesday. Yeah. Nice Wednesday. See you Wednesday. Thank you. Bye.